Good morning, this is Judy Gula from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, this is the first time in the new year that I have been on Saturday morning Facebook Live. So happy new year, everybody. I was able to get a little bit of time off. Thank you to my wonderful staff. And I was down south where it was warm. And of course, I've come back to the reality of Virginia and it's cold here. Now, I get it, I know, we don't have 12 feet of snow, we, we're not minus 14, but for me, <laughs> this is cold. So, I've grown up in Virginia my whole life, so I don't know, I know there's plenty of other places that are colder than here. But it is a bit nippy today. So, I hope that everybody made it through the holidays survive those and maybe found some time for some creativity or self-care um, for me my self-care is i sit and i read junk books i was able to sit on the beach and then i got into hand stitching i, I sit there and i go why can't i do this at home why can i not get it going well i don't know maybe it was just that it was relaxed it was a different environment and i made a purpose of doing one of my sea life critter things because I was at the ocean and that happened and of course as soon as I got home I stopped <laughs> so you know everybody goes through these ebbs and flows about when their creativity flows and when it doesn't and part of it I think is that you you know Nike had the best brand is just do it just start the first stitch is the hardest the first piecing is the toughest but if you get going you're like oh well this is fun I can do more so that's one thing I want to tell you is you know everybody gets ebbs and flows of creativity but sometimes you just have to make that first stitch or you and, you, and then you'll be you can get onto a roll and then sometimes you have to just read junk books and or look at I the other thing I used to do in the winter um, because the winter is always tough it's a lot less light for me so I you know kind of understand why bears hibernate in the winter is um, I would just sit and read creative books if I couldn't create something, I could look and appreciate somebody else's. So those are my ideas about jump-starting some creativity. Um, as I've told you many times before, this is a tough time for me. So I have to really work on being present and positive and, and creative. Those, those take a little energy. But I am very excited to be here this morning and to show you what I was working on. I had lots of questions. I had lots of likes on Facebook as I was posting them every day. So I'm going to try and answer a lot of these questions for you. Um, and and I, I keep saying I'm going to put some, some Zoom classes together. And um, I, I promise I will. I'm working on them. So what I started out with first is I used Indian or Indian hand dyed cottons they come in two textures one is a little bit stiffer and then one is a little bit so this is more of what we call the heavier kind and you can see it, it is a cotton it is thicker it is uh, more tightly woven and uh, this one is a little bit gauzier and it's a lighter weight so um, that's the best that I can try to explain to you do I have a favorite one between the two of them I tend to like the gauzier one a little bit better but I know like Susan Edmondson loves the heavier weight ones and I uh, uses those in her classes and I've used both perfectly okay the other one's just a little bit small softer so we have them in two weights and um, many many different colors you can go in colorways and then you can go in big colorways so that is all available online and that the designation as I said is lightweight and heavyweight and then you can pick a color bundles however you want those are all on the web so I they're fat quarters so I just took the whole fat quarter and I did my block printing on the whole piece 
This was a little bit more travel oriented. I figured I could cut them out, I could use them, and it, they are ultimately gonna be in a fabric book working with um, shells and things. But this was easier to actually maneuver and take with me. So when I prep my fabric for stitching, I use Misty Fuse. And, and this will all iron back down. So you can see this this fusible here, and it peeled off really easily because I probably didn't heat it enough. Um, so Misty Fuse does not come with paper. Paper uh, processing, interfacing, or fusibles with a paper is a little more environmentally tough. So to take that extra step of not having the paper adhering to it is, is a better manufacturing process. So it comes, it's, you could see that it's a fusible here and it comes in a package with not, without paper. So you need a um, Teflon sheet or parchment paper or goddess sheet. So Musty Fuse has this same thing. I'm sorry, I grabbed this one and I should have grabbed some other ones. But they are um, Teflon sheets. You can see it, they're brown. You put that, so I would lay my fusible onto my fabric, put my muse, Misty Fuse there, and then put my Teflon sheet or parchment paper on it and iron it. And the more you iron, Misty Fuse, the stronger the adherence is. Whereas I've actually ironed some of the other fusibles to the point where they didn't fuse anymore, I, f I ironed them away. So uh, another reason why we really like Misty Fuse. So that's how I prep my fabric for my hand stitching. I do the same thing with beading. Any questions so far? No questions? No questions? Okay. I use uh, flannel. That was the thing I didn't, did I say that? Okay, so I use flannel. If flannel can be, you know, whatever flannel you have, just as long as the pattern is not going to come through onto the front. So we're having a little bit of difficulty getting um, some flannels, and so we have gone to buying lighter patterns, and we just use this rather than white. I will tell you, please wash your flannel before you use it. Flannel shrinks. It has a very high shrinkage rate, at least the cheap flannel that we were using, and it's a little bit of a problem when you don't wash it first and then you use a steam iron on it. Just trust me on this. Trust me, because it's not good. All right, the other material that we have that's really nice to stitch with, and I've done several stitch books, is this is called Osnaberg. This is a cotton, it's a very light woven, similar to what our Indian lightweight wovens are. You can use them natural, you can dye them if you want. Um, there, it's a, it's a really nice surface to work on. All right, so that's my fabric prep. All right, and as you can see, I did the whole, I worked on the whole fat quarter. So I took, these, um, I specifically tried to work around this block kit because I thought that that was, um, would give us lots of motifs. So this is the Sea Life block kit. It is in stock. And then I used the pudding paint, as we say. This is the two ounce Artistic Artifacts textile paint. So what I started out, the thought process was, I was going to paint, put the wood blocks, paint them, um, and use that and cover it completely and not have any of the paint show up. Just kind of use it as my pattern. But I actually, after a while, I used the paint as part of the design process. I didn't cover it totally. I used an opaque paint. Transparent might work. I found that on this Indian cotton, I really needed the opaque paint to show the pattern enough for me to stitch it. So we've done previous videos and I'm, I'm actually gonna do something in the future again about printing, but you take this paint, you take a sponge, and you're using a dabbing motion onto the block, all right? You're having also a foam mat. So these are foam mats that have a 
you know, kind of, they're thicker than those little kids foam mat things that you get. Um, and then you stamp there. So that's the stamping process. We'll get into that a, uh, a little bit more. But we have some other videos about that. And I just stamped the entire fat corner. I just, just jumped. Now you will see some motifs that were single blocks. Like this um, shell one here, we haven't had this in a while. We'll look at getting it back. This fish was a sample block that I received. Um, and you can see I tried printing it with a pearlescent first. You can see it in here. And it didn't really work, so I had to go back over it with the pink. <clears throat> so that's how I got my samples down. Any questions? Everybody's good? <clears throat> All right. One of the other questions that we had was talking about needles and thread. So um, thread, I, I'm, I'm a thread junkie. I, I say it out loud, AA is for thread junkies. And I also have become um, somebody who uses only tulip needles. So there's a couple of clover needles that are chenille, but I really like how sharp the tulip needles are. So one of the things that I think, there, well, there's several things I think everybody should have. This is a very um, inexpensive, but very, very informative little book about knowing your needles. It talks about machine needles and hand stitching needles. And one of, uh, it tells, shows you the differences in the eye. Let me get to the hand stitching. It is written, of course, by my buddy Liz Kettle. So what it'll, the diagram includes the size of the eye, which I think is really important because chenille needles have a larger eye than embroidery needles. So I don't use embroidery needles, I use chenille needles. I am using pearl cottons, I am not using floss. I actually haven't worked with a lot of floss in a long time. So I'm trying, let me see if I, these are all, chenilles. See, can you see how large that eye is? That's what you want for working with pearls. Not an embroidery needle. Embroidery needle is more for, um, I don't know, I would probably even use these for floss. I think that eye on an embroidery needle is really small. It doesn't work for me. And um, the other rule that I learned from uh, Ruth and Ruth Chandler, who wrote Modern Hand Stitching, and Liz, was if you can't thread that needle in three tries, go to a larger needle. If you have a hole that's too big, when you stitch, when you thread your needle and stitch it, and your thread is not feet filling that hole, then go to a smaller needle. So there's things that you can watch to see how the needle and thread combination are affecting your stitching. Is that clear as mud or is that clear? <laughs> I, I learned a lot from both of them about stitching and making it fun and easy rather than hard and difficult. Everybody good? Are they still with me? Okay. Sharon and Jenner answering some questions about flannel. Okay, cool. Yes, flannel is, is tricky, but now I've just gotten to the point where I use anything, but please wash it first. All right, even before, before you do that. All right, the other tool I have really have kind of gotten hooked on, and I use this in beading as well, is this is a daylight magnifier. So here's... There's the product, it's available online for us. This one is my personal one, it operates with a battery. And um, this is the only way that I can thread my beading needles. I, I had a conversation with a customer in the store the other day that had difficulty with the, the automatic needle threaders. I'm not very successful in those either. I know people like them, they can use them, we sell them, that's all good, but I have to use the magnifier and that it's lit. I haven't gotten to the point where I use the magnifier for stitching, but I'm sure that's coming one day soon. Great tool. 
and it is battery. And the other thing that I really love about it is this is how big it is. And it is a daylight product. So it's really compact and easily to use. So Oh, my glasses. Yeah, I need those too, my cheap uh, reader glasses. Kyle's gonna grab them for me, so he's moving. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, I have, I had threaded a needle, but maybe not. Oh yeah, I did, okay. So, I'm sure there's different ways of doing this, but, this is probably a size eight, size five. And you can see this side, this edge is not one to, to um, stitch with. All right, so I'm gonna pull it up here. And I mush it down. Uh, okay, so I can't get it through that one. So I'm gonna go to the next one. Push it. So this is a little bit larger. I'm going to squeeze it. And that's why I need my magnifying glass. And it comes up. So again, if you get, don't get frustrated trying to thread a needle. That's not the right needle to be working with. All right. Um, and I always thought it was better to use a really, really thin needle because you didn't want the hole. Well, that's a great idea but if you have you know and when you're pulling because your thread is is too big for your needle it's going to make you pull and that's going to give you a bigger hole and so you need the correct needle to go through the thread to make the right stitch all right so Tulip needles, we sell them in specific sizes, but if you're first starting out, I recommend the multi-pack. But I will tell you, I probably use the 18 the most. Yeah, so we have, we have multi-packs, and then we have individual sizes. Turn them. There we go. Oh yeah, so you can read them instead of me reading them. <laughs> um, there. So they're definitely, uh, I think they're worth, worth the um, price, and I, I find them very reliable. So now let's talk a little bit about thread and what I did here. So let's start with the basic one is here so this was kind of my first start so you can see here's my block print of my shell and I can tell that can you see this thread here that one that threads bigger than this thread so as simply changing the size of the thread will help you um, let's see this is a size 8 so here's a size eight here. Um, then you have, here, let me show it this way. Sharon just put in our newsletter this week, I think it was, was about pearl compared to floss. And so if you're used to stitching in floss, then she gave you a pretty easy conversion that she picked up off of somebody's blog, which I'm sorry, I can't remember whose it is. She'll type it in, um, that gave you the equivalent to what it was. But this can add so much just by changing the size of the, of the thread. All right, so this is a three. This should be, that's a five. And this is an eight. So eight, this is all eleganza, wonderful eleganza. So this is an eight and this is an eight. But what I did to just change what the texture was is to just change the size of the thread. Okay, then let me show you this one. Um, these are my favorite scissors. These are um, K, K Buckley. 
and they're great they're sharp they're really nice all right so this row here so we'll start at the top with my jellyfish and and I just kind of see so this is going to be a French knot in a size three so a, a th size three is going to be a thicker thread so it's going to give you a nice chunky um, French knot and then I actually started with this variegated thread and I decided I didn't like it I was going to do more stitching with it and I never unstitch I don't take things out it is what it is so I put a little bit more in and then I changed to the yellow and here's when I realized oh I like the block print I want that to be part of the design and I didn't want to stitch over the whole thing I could put more French knots in here those just beg for French knots I did just some straight stitch a lot of things can be done with straight stitch I went around I can go past this you know I was gonna put little cure cure curly cues Wow can't say that one um, down there or uh, so there's there's more that you can do going beyond the print but that's an example of, th of two different sizes. I did three, and then I probably use eight the most. I tend to do that one. Okay, so then the fish. The fish is here, and I started doing some French knots at the end. Again, you can see the paint through it. This is probably a size eight thread eleganza now we also have painters threads which are hand dyed in germany we have a large large selection of different um, threads from them they also have pearl and she does do floss and she does do silk so that's that one now my seahorse okay again i thought i was going to do it with this size um, five I think this is five and this is eight I thought I was going to use this variegated blue and you can see it's I thought it was too dark so I ended up using size 12 sewing machine thread all right I swore to Liz and Ruth that I would never use machine thread I use it a lot I love it so Wonderful has these packages you can buy them singly from us here per color and then you can or you can find them in packs like this is just really nice and bright and there's other packs that are on the line as well but this so this is size 12 this will work in your machine on the top as well as now you can stitch with it and you can see it gave a really different texture it's a little shinier than the pearl I changed colors multiple times I think that this was the one that I got the most responses on Facebook that they really love the seahorse and I think that the thread was different if I had done it all in this I think it would have just been too dark for my personal preference and that the smaller thread allowed me to do a little bit more with the triangles that are in the wood block. So here's the wood block when I stamped it. And here's it now. Okay. So um, as I said, the threads that I use are going to be painter's threads. I love the gimp, I love the pearl. This is also, this is all painters. All right, they have some braided metallic that's really fun. Um, we have a, a very detailed uh, YouTube video about painters threads and the different options. So um, please refer to that. I'm not going to go back over those, but these are wonderful threads. The other is uh, Wonderfill specialty threads that we love. You can get boxes that have these smaller amounts that give you a variety and then we have the large 
spools and the, the colorways are designed by Sue Spargo. So we have all of Sue Spargo's threads as well and the spools and these variegated. The, so there's lots of different options on a way to get thread. We recommend if you're first starting out, you buy the multi-size chenille and then maybe one of these color packs that gives you the more options. All right, let's see. Okay, this one was done, this is size eight, but this is size three. So that again was showing the texture, changing, and you can see I change my mind in the middle of things, but I don't take it out. I, I originally thought I would do lines, and I was like, oh, I don't really like that. So let's try something else. So then I used a back stitch going around these, and I thought, oh, well, that's okay, but it still needs something in the middle. So I did just these straight stitches and crossed them and thought, okay, well that looks a little better. Let's make some variety. So this kind of made me think of coral and you know how coral is, is spiky and has depth to it. So that was that one. Um, this is one that I printed on fabric. I love this collection. It, it, it was it's absolutely beautiful. It's, we still have a bit of it, but I like it. So this was a shell, and this is a chain stitch. Lots of things that we get from India have lots of chain stitch, and I actually have a chain stitch machine in my store that's on display. And then I thought, okay, well, if I just did the lines, it's still not enough stitching, and I just crisscross these down there. And I think that that was eight. This one was actually the first one I started. This one was the last one that I was able to do. Um, again, my idea was I was gonna use this, and this is size 12, and I was gonna just use the whole thing as 12. I think, okay, I don't like this part right here. So I went to a size three, and I thought, oh, well, that's nice and juicy. So I am gonna go through and put a little bit more of this to get to make it a little more cohesive so this is this kind of screams at you down here at this corner well it screams at me and so I have some space up here where I can go back and use a little bit more of that teal but again I changed my mind I didn't like it I kept sewing I kept going forward I don't take things out um, maybe I should but I don't let's see I think that's all my samples I talked about needles, my woodblock printing, needles, thread, my kind of design process. I would recommend um, these books. So my, uh, my all-time favorite is by Ruth Chandler. Again, very good friend of mine. And it's Modern Hand Stitching. So this is the first, if you have never done stitching before, this is the first book to start with. Um, these two are great support books. I actually had this one in Florida because I was trying to look at things differently. And um, this one is always very good as well. So Sue Spargo's book is wonderful. So I would recommend those. Um, Sharon was putting a book up on the website um, that will have, and, and so they she took the clothespins and added some thread to them rather than doing these card things. So these are indigo dyed clothespins and we have those on our website as well as vintage clothespins. I know, who would think to th that these were a tool? So these are, as I said, indigo dyed and these are vintage. So we still have those. And this is a lot more fun than those little cards are. I talked to you about scissors. Scissors are very important to be sharp all the way down. Um, and then I have these. This is a Sue Spargo product, and it's a zipper. So you can you have three places to put them. And this is Velcro. She designed these to put them in a carrying case. And I'm like, Sue, what do I do with this Velcro? I'll, I'll never get my stuff in a case. She says, just put wool on it and cover your Velcro. I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. So that's why I have this funky um, wool that's on there. Any questions?
Yes. Uh, do you remove extra fusible? From no. The the Missy fuse? I, I, no. I just leave all the fusible on. Um, oops, here's one here. So I'm, I'm not sure if I re understand the question, but I just leave it. So it, it's all there. Even if I don't, if I use this piece of fabric for something else, I just leave it as it is. Does that make sense? I remove the extra fusible from my iron eventually. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, can we take a look at the needle for more time? Yeah, sure. All right, let's see if we can. I think we need a dark thing. Where did I put them now? All right. So they are tulip needles and they are chenille needles. And the reason why I like the chenille is the eye. So this is a, probably a size 18. So see that, see how big that eye is? And I can tell you those are sharp. They, they, I've never gotten the hang of working with a thimble, but I know people can do it, but I, these will go right through your finger. They're sharp, but it's got this long elongated eye. It's much, much easier to thread than anything. So this is probably, as I said, the 18, which is going to be the largest. Um, needle size is 24 is going to be the smallest. 18 is going to be the largest. That's why I say the multi-pack's got an 18, 20, 22, and 24 in it. So it gives you an idea of a start place for your needles. Is that helpful? Okay, we got a few back-to-back -back ones. Okay. Um, thank you, Jen. Uh, how do you store needles, and how long do they last, typically? I lose them before they go dull. Um, I store them. How do I store them? Well, you know, you can... Oh. Okay, let me phrase this. How I think would be a better way to store them... <laughs> would be in a needle book that has the size on them. So when you take them out of the 18 jar, you put them on the 18 page in your needle book. I can tell you I don't do that. So at one point in time, I'm going to grab my needle. Um, we were able to get these containers. Um, and we're looking to get them again. They're namaste containers. And they're, they're a little, you know, the closure can be a little off. And, I, and you just kind of have to roll with it. But the brilliance of these is that this is a magnet. So um, let me see if I can get this stuff. If I'm lucky, I can get them back in the tube because tulip needles come in these tubes. But um, that, again, doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, I'm picking my stuff up and throwing them in here. So these two back pieces are magnets. And we're working on getting these again. I love this product. It comes in two sizes. I absolutely adore it. And uh, so we're, we're going to look at um, getting them again. We're working with the distributor, at, the manufacturer at the moment. Um, this is the clover needle that... Um, I think I had to, no choice but to buy these at one point in time, and we did have them as well. Ruth likes them, but you can see they're called Golden Eye because the gold is highlighting the, um, the uh, eye, makes it a little bit easier. So these are, these are good too. But, so that's how I store my needles, not how I think you should store them. <laughs> But um, yeah, and I, and I love these cases because they're, I can just throw it in here and close it. I usually have a pair of scissors in there as well. And that's my little, my container. And they make them half and then the full. So what other questions? Everyone's sharing how they're storing their needles. Okay, good, good, that's great. A large magnet. A large <laughs> magnet, yes. We, you know, those magnetic, the, the thing that really, if you, I don't get too hung up on size once I figure, I just pull the needle that works. So the idea of knowing what size they are 
is not necessarily important for me personally, but it's helpful if I can tell you. You know, I use a size three pearl thread and I use the size 18 needle. I just generally pick one out and if it doesn't thread, I go to the next size that I can find. So magnetics things are great. Like they have the magnetic pin holders and and we have a new magnetic one that's square. I don't I can't remember what the brand is. But one of the things that happens with those regular pin holder magnetics is that you stick yourself when you're pulling your pin. This magnetic one that we have, you can put it it puts the point in. So when you grab it off the side of it, you're not grabbing the stabby point. Um, Sharon, can you put that in the, she'll put, she'll put, we have them. They're heavy as all get out, but they're meta metal, metallic and they'll, um, they'll grab the pins, but I think it's great that they put the side that you can hold out there. Leslie said she uses a tomato, and for a split second, I thought she was going to the grocery store. No, that's a very, that's a true, tried and true. You take your tomato pin cushion, draw lines on it, and um, put the size in there. So when you use it, you put it back in. That is tried and true. That's years and years that has worked for people. I usually remember that stuff too late. <laughs> So, all right, answered all the questions? Okay, the others, I got, so I have a couple of announcements. We have, a, we have our first beginning quilting class. Um, they had a session last week, they're coming in today. So I'm sure they're gonna be at the door in a few minutes. But we are very excited that we have an app now. So you heard maybe a little bit seen in our emails that we're now working with this, um, program that's called Comments Sold, an organization, very wonderful organization. And what that allows us to do is to set up a channel, a shopping channel, a shopping network that allows us to pull some of these unique items that we have and that I find and uh, allows us an easier way to get them up online and to sell them to you different than the website. So we now have two channels. We have Artistic Artifacts app and we have ArtisticArtifacts.com. So we just held our um, first sale with our app on Thursday evening and it was focusing on Tula. So what this allowed us to do was to make kits, to make special purchases. We actually discounted quite a bit of Tula and only did that on the app. So if you go to the App Store or the Google app, both Android and iPhone allow you to download the app. You sign in, you create an account, you can use Facebook still, however you want, but the app is the better way to go. And that's where our special one-off, small quantities type of things will be. Well, now we hope where our plan is that we have the third Thursday and then every other week we can't get quite to weekly but we're going to try to go to every other week i have a big warehouse full of very special stuff so i need to present it to you um our this free shipping is the same as on our website we've had to increase it to 75 dollars i know everybody understands that we all know why this happens um we held it down as low as we could for as long as we could. So our new free shipping is you purchase $75, you get free shipping within the United States if you have a, a US zip code. So that includes Hawaii and Alaska as well. Um, so sign up, if you're a Tula fan, sign in, create, get an account in the app and you can shop, <coughs> excuse me. Sale prices go off at, on Sunday, so you do have some time. Um, okay, let's see, I have that app. I have that, um, if you're local in the area, we're gonna have a special sale on the fifth Saturday. We're not gonna tell you what it is yet, but uh, we'll every fifth Saturday, we'll have a little bit of a special for in-store only. And <laughs> then we will, have next week is Kathy Lincoln uh, we'll do the Facebook live she has some really really cute embroidered little boxes for Valentine's and then 
then following week after that for Facebook Live, I'm gonna actually take these motifs and use my machine to create the thread um, embellishments on them so we can see, you know, not everybody likes to hand stitch. So we have some ability to do that with our machines. Um, and I think that's as far as I can go out. <laughs> I don't know if I can remember everything further. All right, questions? Did I forget anything, Kyle? I think so. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us. It's great to see you guys. And thank you so much for being part of the Artistic Artifacts community. We will post this on our YouTube channel. And it will continue to be on Facebook for those of you who would like to see it. Share with friends. Um, share. We, we love shares and comments. Thanks. See you next week.